Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I've, I've, I used to be a climate guy, I'm now, now a water guy. We have essentially seen climate change as a problem of the future. Climate is something that will, ha a bad thing that will happen tomorrow if you don't do something today. Well, the news is, it's happening today because we didn't do anything yesterday. We are living in the age of adaptation. The second realization which I hope can set in is the realization that climate is really about development. How do you deal with disaster? You deal with it by having better development. Why do some people die in earthquakes and floods and other people don't? Because some people live in stronger houses than other people. Some people can prepare better for it. So the realization should set in that climate and its impacts are really about development. One of the good things is we've been adapting forever. Right? The, the fact that you and I are wearing these jackets is an adaptation to weather device. Uh, sweaters are adaptation to weather's device that have happened historically. So there's a lot to learn from. Um, countries have been adapting for a long time. The Netherlands, for example, has adapted to its particular geography, its particular uh, um, um, weather characteristics in particular ways. Uh, through a lot of engineering, through how it manages water, water and other things. Other countries are beginning and should be learning things like that, not just from the Netherlands, but from all over. What you are seeing, and I think what is the best practice again, is linking development to climate adaptation. How do you adapt? You adapt by becoming more resilient. Now that's a fancy word, but what it really means is you figure out how you can beat the change by being better prepared for it. That means early warning. Part of that is science. Knowing earlier and better what is about to happen. We can do that with weather. The second thing it means is doing the type of development, what's called sustainable development, that is going to reduce the impact of the extreme event that, that happens. The good part of this bad story, because extreme events by definition are bad things that, 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 that cause problems and cost, the good part of the bad story is that there are many ancillary payoffs if you prepare better for extreme events. That it's a win-win in that sense. For, for, for example, for example if, if a lot of what you need to do to build resilience is better infrastructure, Right? Now, again, better infrastructure has many other benefits. So the things that you can do to build resilience, while some of them are very costly, also have high development benefits. Information. Information and early warning, I think, is we are still very new in this climate phase of this. So there aren't as many best practices as we would want to, be, want to have. But amongst the earliest gains are in information, in dissemination of information. Technology is helping there. One of the things we've seen is that the better availability and dissemination of information wherever that happens can actually save many, many lives. Uh, I think water is the next frontier. In fact, it's already the frontier. Uh, I think we are going to be talking more and more about water in more and more new ways in the coming century, and particularly about climate. When we think about climate till now, we essentially think carbon. Mm -hmm. right? As long as you're thinking mitigation, you are talking about carbon management. Somehow reduce carbon so that climate change happens less. We still need to do that. That's called mitigation. Carbon management is essentially energy management. As soon as you understand that you live in the age of adaptation, you are essentially talking a lot about water. We have to grapple with the idea that water management is as crucial to the future of climate change as carbon management. But we are still thinking about water in an old sort of way. What I mean by this is the following. We usually think about water in two ways, quantity and quality. Do we have enough of it? And is it safe enough and healthy enough? Both of those are extremely important. But we need to think about water in one, at least one other way, which is the variability of water. Right? That's what droughts and floods alert us to. It's not simply whether I have enough water. It's a question of when do I have water. And, and over centuries, people have built their livelihoods essentially on a general knowledge of where water will be when. In comes climate and changes that equation, a whole lot of things go berserk. Th think about the farmer, right? Whether the farmer is in Switzerland or in the US or in Pakistan or in Bangladesh. The farmer is an amazingly complex scientist 
who's using data over centuries of when is it going to rain, what type of crop grows when, and what climate does is it sends all of that topsy-turvy. So we need to think about water, not only quantity, quality, but now we need to think about it in terms of access and availability. Water is to adaptation what carbon was to mitigation.